And they start to do the same dumb things that they did before. And then they wonder how come things are going bad. And they blame God. I've watched it in churches. It's a frustration to my spirit. We've had services at times where I mean, the Holy Ghost falls in awesome power in the morning. Mm -hmm. Glorious things are done. Words are given. People are touched and healed. Yes, and then that night, three quarters of the church doesn't come back. Yep. Why is that? Well, because we think that because God did it, it's going to always be that way. Are you hearing me? Yeah. We think that because God did something in the morning, it's automatically going to continue on. But God did what God did in the morning sovereignly, and he spoke yeah. to us to do things. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you do these things, then I will continue to do these things. Mm -hmm. But when we stop, it stops what God is doing. Right. And we fall right back into doing the same things that we've done before. This is why it's so easy to stop doing things and so hard to start doing them again. God delivers people from, oh, well, he delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from alcohol. He delivered me from hatred, prejudices, all kinds of other things. And directly after God did that for me the first time, I did the same thing the children of Israel did. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When I went back to the Lord, it was a lot of work. It was so hard to get back what God had given me before. I thought that I was just going to stroll right back into the kingdom and everything was going to fall right back into place. No. Well, that just did not happen. I had to fight every inch of the way. And it's almost like God was saying, if you're going to get it back this time, son, you're going to... The only way you're going to appreciate it is if you really try for it. Yeah. I've talked to people. I'll talk to you and I'll ask you just, just in your own hearts this evening. Do you remember a time, possibly in your life, where your relationship with God was more exciting and more fervent than it is right now. Don't answer. Where you did things for the Lord and it was a thrill to do things for the Lord. And there was an excitement and a zeal. And maybe everything wasn't going perfect. Maybe everything was really hard. But there was still something exciting about what God was doing. Remember days like that? If those days are gone, we've got to ask ourselves, church, why those days are gone. I don't believe that those days are gone because God doesn't want us to be excited That's right. about serving Him. I don't believe that those days of our service and zeal for the Lord are gone simply because the Lord says, well, you've gotten old enough, now you're going to die. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that for a minute. I believe that we can be as close to God as we want to be close to God. Amen. We can experience all of God that we want to experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's so much more of God to experience. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you know what? It doesn't just 
fall on us all the time. We want God to give us a pill. We want God to just open the door and kick us through it. But it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes it, well, all the time it happens because of this one word, decisions. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. In 1 Kings 18, Elijah stood up in front of all the people and asked them, how long will you tarry? Or how long will you have to have it both ways in this translation? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. And the people didn't say a word. Yeah. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. There's a decision that has to be made. And do you know that a decision is not just made one time? When I got married to Tara, I made a decision. But just because I got married to Tara didn't mean that there weren't going to be other girls that came by that thought that they'd like me to take them out. And I would make a decision again. I love my wife. And I don't want anything to do with that. When God set me free from drugs, I had to make the decision, I'm not going to do that again. Are you with me? I made the decision already. But I had to make it the next day. God told me you need to read your Bible and you need to pray and you need to seek me. And I got up on Monday morning and I read the Bible and I prayed and I saw him. But then Tuesday came. And you know what? God said, you're going to need to do it again, bud. You know why? Because if I want to experience all that God has, it's an ongoing process. If you want to experience everything God has for you, it's an Ongoing process. And I think one of the greatest enemies, I think one of the greatest enemies to us experiencing everything that God has is this one simple thing. And you need to listen real careful because this is the the devil's tricky. He gets you to despise the day of small beginnings. You never appreciate what you have. You think that you will value something once it gets big. (laughs) But our value for something will not change from the time it's small to the time it's big. If we don't appreciate what God is doing right now, we won't appreciate what God is doing if there's 10,000 people here. That's right. If we don't appreciate the ministry that God gives to us, mm-hmm. it's like for me. If I don't appreciate every single one of you folks and love you and care about you, what's going to make a difference if there's 10,000 more? I just wouldn't love them either. You see, this is why the Bible says despise not the day of small beginnings. And we wind up shooting ourselves in the foot and we don't appreciate what God's doing. We don't take care of what God's given to us. We don't value what God's given to us. And because we don't value what God's given to us, He doesn't give us any more. That's right. Come on. That's right. Proverbs 4.20 My son, pay attention to my words and open your ears to what I say. Do not lose sight of these things. Keep them deep within your heart because they're life to those who find them. They'll heal the whole body. Verse 23, guard your heart more than anything else. 
Because the source of your life flows through it. Remove dishonesty from your mouth. Put deceptive speech far away from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your sight be focused on what's in front of you. Carefully walk a straight path. And then all your ways will be secure. Why will your ways be secure? Because you carefully walk a straight path. Do not lean to the right nor to the left. Walk away from evil. My son, pay attention to these words. We need to make a decision that we're going to walk the straight path that God puts us on. That we're going to value what God's given to us. I know guys that don't appreciate their wives. They're always looking at some other woman. I talked to a brother a few weeks back who saw somebody who goes to church or he'd seen go to church. And this brother was married, or this person was married. But they were checking out all the other women. See, and people who are single say, why would he do that? He's married. Yeah, yeah. Come on. He's got a wife that loves him. Yeah. That person might have kids. Why would he do that? Well, because he doesn't appreciate what he has. That's right. <clears throat> and because he doesn't appreciate what he has, it flows into every other area. And I want Christians to do that. Yeah. We don't appreciate what God's given to us. And we're always looking around at what else there is. And we're judging how good what we have is by what we see happening somewhere else. I know a girl that got married one time. She came into the church and God love her. She had just had a hard life. I mean, she was young, but she had had a hard life. You know, sometimes you don't have to live a lot of years to have a lot of years behind you. Well, this young girl came in and she hadn't lived a whole lot of years, but she had a lot of life in those years. And God, you know, she, she found this young guy in church and they got married. And the first thing this young girl started to do was compare her new husband with every other guy that God would bring into the church. And pretty soon she didn't appreciate very much what she already had. She began to think, maybe I should have waited. And that church was only a reflection of what had happened in her heart with God. Yeah. <clears throat> See, what happens in our relationship with God translates out in our relationship with other things. God wants to bless us. God wants to do great things. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I believe that God wants to save people and deliver people from the fires of hell. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. I believe that God doesn't want a single soul to die and go to hell. That's right. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't die for everyone. That's right. 